Hello. Turn this volume down. How's everybody doing? I promised y'all a makeup show. And I am here to deliver. I heard. No, hey, hey. Where you at? Where you at? All right. We're all shared out on Facebook. Let's get our act together on Instagram. Okay. Uh, let me turn this down. Okay, let's go live. Cardi, please. We're about to have the show. Um, okay, leaf. Prepare a loan. Hello, 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 hello. All right. Okay. Hey, guys. All right, we are getting started in three minutes. Um, as you come in, please say hi. Let me know where you're joining from so I can greet you. No, I said something maybe I know. Um, again, this is a makeup show because I was not here on Tuesday for you guys. So I wanted to make sure that, you know, we got our time in. Share this out with your friends. Do, 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 do. Happy Thursday, y'all. It's Friday Eve. Yes, we're getting started in just a couple of minutes. Share this out to your friends. Tonight we have stories about uh, if the body challenge, um, Apple being a bully, Tampa. We got a story about Tampa Bay. And we have a story about copyrights and... Police misconduct. So that'll be an interesting one. Um, yeah. Uh, where y'all at? What happens on Thursdays that y'all y'all ain't here? Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, uh, I want to say hi to my parents and my sister. And to uh, everybody who watches, thank you who supports me. Y'all are awesome. We're getting started in just two minutes. <clears throat> we will be, uh, we're going to have our Black Business Spotlight. Then we're going to do our NPL Nuggets. Then we're going to do our stories. It's going to be a great time, guys. Come on into the room. Mm -mm -mm -mm. <laughs> yes, gotta keep that energy up. Where are y'all? That's fine. That's cool. All right, we've got one minute till we start. Uno minuto. One minute. So, uh, my friend's watching on Facebook. I see the eyes. I can see you watching. Say hi. <laughs> You guys are so silly and so shy. I don't know why. All right, we are going to get started momentarily. Let me turn this off right here. Okay. Y'all got any fun plans for the weekends? Let me know. I'm going to be inside. Like I'm supposed to be. Like I'm supposed to be. Hey. Ooh. <laughs> um. <laughs> All right, it's time to start, guys. Let's go. <laughs> All 
All right. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Happy Thursday, everybody. Welcome to a special episode of MPL Legal Dish. This is my usually Monday through Wednesday live broadcast where I teach business and legal concepts using pop culture and celebrity news. If you're wondering who I am, I am Natalie Pierre Lewis. I'm the host of the show and I'm the owner and operator of MPL Consulting LLC, a business formation firm. What that means is I help people like yourself get your business paperwork together so that you can hit these business streets with confidence and be able to do things like access business credit, get business loans, get your products into big box stores. I help you do all of those foundational things, things like getting your articles of incorporation, making sure you have EIN numbers and DUNS numbers, contracts for clients and partners, brand protection strategies so people don't steal your business ideas, and hiring and training strategies so you don't get sued for discrimination. I help you establish all of these things. If you're wondering why I'm qualified, I'm so, so happy that you asked. I am a licensed attorney, have been one for 15 years and counting. I've started multiple businesses for myself and others, both online and offline. I've had many careers in the realms of entrepreneurship, the law, education, hospitality, and administrative support. And most important, I'm very passionate about making business and legal education as accessible to everyone as possible. Not everybody has the time, the money, or the desire to go to business school or to law school, but a lot of you have amazing business ideas. And if you're going to be successful in business, there are just some things that you need to know. There's no way around it. Okay. So if you are in the startup phase of your business or you've got a business idea and you don't know even where to start, or you've been in business for a while and you feel like you need some more structure, hit me up. I want to help you get your business life together. You're going to go to linktree forward slash NPL consulting firm to connect with me at linktree forward slash NPL consulting firm. You can book yourself a free 15 minute consultation. If you're a first time client, you can also download my free biz launch cheat sheet that will help you choose and start your dream business in seven days or less at linktree forward forward slash MPL consulting firm. You can also access a lot of my digital products like my let's get EIN numbers workshop that I am promoting this month. And, um, excuse me, my business startup basics that gives you a crash course in how to run uh, and how to start your business. Um, as well at link true forward slash NPL consulting firm, you can subscribe to the YouTube channel and the podcast. So if you ever miss a live broadcast, you can catch up on it at your leisure. And last but not least at link true forward slash NPL consulting firm is where you can get show merch, NPL legal dish merch, like my t-shirt that comes in white, black, and navy blue, like my mug, like the NPL legal dish mugs. Once these are gone, they're gone. So make sure you grab yours. Okay. Um, go to link to forward slash NPL consulting firm. All right. So, uh, but that's enough about me. Let's get to the reason why we are here today for the show. All right. So if you're watching and you know, you don't know how it goes for some reason, let me educate you. So this month, as we know, uh, is February. It's Black History Month. So we are starting off each broadcast with a black business spotlight. This is a business that I have used myself and that, uh, you know, I can attest to the quality of their goods or services. Then we have our NPL Nuggets where I, um, excuse me, give you a quick business or legal lesson in a couple of minutes. And then we get to our stories. Now, where do I get these stories from? I get them from everywhere. I get them from you guys. You guys send me stories in my DMs. I get them from blog sites. I get them from podcasts. I get them from lots of places. And I choose the ones that have lessons that we can learn as business owners. And we, uh, and, and we, discuss them. Okay. So this is a time for you to get involved. Don't be shy. I want your questions. I want your comments. Um, as long as they're respectful, I will be asking you questions as well. Um, yeah. So without any further ado, let's get started. Okay. So, uh, like I said, we are starting off every show in February with a black business spotlight. And today I want to highlight, uh, Leaks Organic Blends, uh, they are a, um, a Maryland-based organic juice company. I have purchased from them myself. I actually interviewed the uh, owner of that business and um, recently, if you check my podcast. Uh, they make uh, fresh, cold-pressed juices, uh, you know, all different types of flavors. They've got a blueberry lemon twist. They've got a ginger detox. They've got all types of lemonades. So if you're in the DMV area and you want some like cold pressed juice, uh, make sure you check out Leek's Organic Blends. Okay. Uh, all right. And so 
Now let's move on to our NPL nugget of the evening. High lifestyle of Lola. Uh, so this month we are covering AIN numbers, okay? Um, we are talking about what they are, why we need them, how we get them. We've defined what an EIN number is. We have talked about some of the reasons that you need one. This week, we have been covering, you know, the basics of applying for an EIN number, like the fact that an EIN number is free. Uh, we have also covered the fact that uh, EIN numbers, excuse me, oh, wait, what was the other one? EIN numbers are free. What was the other one? Oh, um... So tonight, uh, the, the NPL nugget that I wanted to let you know is that you can only get one EIN number at a time. Now, many entrepreneurs start multiple businesses. A lot of you out here, you want to run, you know, a boutique shop, a consulting service, you know, a salon, all this stuff. And all that is great. But if you, um, in terms of getting your EIN number for each of those businesses, uh, you have to... Uh, you ha you can only apply for one EIN number per per day, okay? So that is the NPL nugget for tonight. Now we can move into our stories, all right? So tonight, like I said, hey, Obed, we've got a, a, a pretty, uh, Obed, there is a story that I actually want your uh, opinion on. So we're actually going to start with that tonight okay guys uh, if you don't know who dr obed magni is not only is he my cousin he is a very uh learned man he has a phd in um criminal justice and he does um work in the community on evidence-based policing he's awesome um so if you are you know really into police reform go check out dr obed magni all right uh but the first story that we are covering tonight it is the intersection of intellectual property and and injustice or justice however you see it so there is a story that i found today um apparently cops in beverly hills are using the copyright strikes from social media to get around filming now, we know that um, a lot of times these days people are filming their encounters with the police, right? They're putting it on Facebook. They're putting it on Instagram. Um, and apparently there have been instances where um, police officers, specifically in Beverly Hills, when they know that people are filming them, they will start playing copyrighted music in the background and let it play long enough for, you know, the copyright strike to come up and say, you know, we're going to block your broadcast before they will engage any further with the person who is live streaming with them. So this is when you guys, you may not think that intellectual property, you know, touches you from day to day, but it can affect you in so many different ways. So Dr. Obed Magni, as someone who has experience in the law enforcement arena, what do you think about this tactic by um, this alleged tactic by police officers to get around being filmed by citizens um, using copyright claims? Do you think that citizens should be able to, you know, live stream police officers in the first place? And should police police officers have the... Um, have the choice to kind of, I guess, block that by using these copyright claims. Because this, this is a very interesting way of using copyrights to make people mind their business. Hi, JT Black 87 But I just, um, when I read the story, I was like, wow, this is, this is a really ingenious way to use copyright uh, claims to, you know, make things go in your favor. Obed, did you leave already? Okay, well... So you guys tell me what you think. Now, again, allegedly cops in Beverly Hills are using um, copyrighted music to keep people from live streaming them. So if I was live streaming an encounter with a police officer in Beverly Hills, allegedly what they're doing is taking their phones, playing music and letting it play long enough for the live stream to, uh, you know, hear it and, and do the copyright claim and block the broadcast before they engage any further with citizens. What do you think about that tactic by Beverly Hills cops? Now, I think it's smart. It's very smart, but I don't think it's, uh, you know, it's something that should be done, but that's my opinion. So I want to get your opinion on it. What do you think about Beverly Hills cops allegedly using copyright claims to keep people from filming them? Hmm? What do you think about that? 
What do you think? What do you think? Y'all so quiet. What's going on? Are you driving? If you're driving, don't say anything. But if you aren't driving, you know, I want to engage with you. Anyway, but um, I think I, I, I'm interested to hear more about this story. Again, this is just something I read today. I don't know if there's any official, you know, reports on it or any lawsuits or anything. But I thought it was an interesting way of using copyrights uh, by the uh, justice system. Okay. All right, moving on to our next story of the evening. Um, if you have heard the Megan the Stallion body song or have seen the body, the body yaddy challenge, body yaddy 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 yaddy, uh, give me uh, some type of dancing emoji. If you have heard Megan the Stallion's body yaddy song or have seen the body yaddy challenge, Give me some type of dancing emoji in the comments, right? Oh, Lifestyle of Lola said, what are they hiding? It, that, uh, oh, you're referring to the police story? Um, I agree with you. What are they hiding? Why don't you want people to film you? You guys are supposed to be representing justice out in the system, right? So why don't you want people to film you? Okay, moving on to our story. Thank you for the dancing emoji, Lifestyle of Lola, right? Um, lifestyle of Lola, can you do the body challenge? I, you know, I could do like that, you know, <laughs> do you know how to do the body challenge? Um, while Lola gives us her answer. So if you have noticed a lot of songs that come out these days, they have this, you know, uh, intricate choreography. <laughs> no, ma'am. They have this intricate choreography that's coming out. Look, Cardi B just came out with up. There's choreography to that. Megan Thee Stallion seems to come out with, you know, choreography for each of her songs we had the busted challenge we got the you know that silhouette challenge like a lot of songs that are coming out they seem to have <laughs> jc black gave it. uh you know they seem to have dances that go along with them and uh if you have watched this show from the beginning right we have often had cases where people were trying to sue because other people, you know, were using their dances. <laughs> JT Black 87 said that song is so aggravating. Uh, it's a hit though. It's a hit. And that's all, that's all people care about. Right. Um, so in the past, you know, people, they've made music. When you think of things like, think of dances like the mill, the, the Millie dance, uh, or the Millie rock, right. Or the Carlton dance, right. These dances have been appropriated by other organizations and people and the owners of the, uh, or the, you know, the originators of those things have um, attempted to sue, uh, you know, for copyright infringement. The thing is, you can't copyright a simple dance move. The Millie Rock is, you know, essentially a simple move. The Carlton dance is a simple move. However, choreography like the Body Yachty Challenge, the, that is like a recognizable dance. It, it has movement. It's, it is um, created by a professional, right? And in order for you to be able to copyright a dance, it has to be performed by professionals in front of an audience, um, you know, and recorded. Um, and now because a lot of these songs are coming out with challenges and people are specifically seeking out choreographers, there is a choreo choreographer out here, you know, trying to protect his work. His name is Jaquel Knight. He is the one who created the choreography for the Body Yachty Challenge, and he has recently received a copyright for the Body Yachty Challenge choreography. So... If you thought that you could be out here at, you know, the college talent show performing the Body Alley Challenge, you cannot do that. Not if they're charging admission. This is uh, this choreography. It is officially Jaquel Knights and he gets to say what is done with it. OK, so this is why copyrights are important in um, in the past. Copyrights have been very uh, for dance have been very elusive, but Jaquel Knight seems to be making his way, especially when this new age of matching dances to songs. So I think this is really great for particularly choreographers um, and the arts in general, people understanding how to protect their work and to capitalize on it. So we want to say congratulations to Jaquel Knight um, for his copyright. So JT Black 87, you're not going to be doing the body challenge anytime soon? Body, yaddy, 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 yaddy. 
All right. Okay. Before we move on to our next story, I want to remind you guys that you are watching NPL Legal Dish. This is my Monday through 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 Wednesday live broadcast where I teach business and legal concepts using pop culture and celebrity news. I'm on today on a Thursday because I missed Tuesday and I wanted to make sure that you guys got your three episodes this week. All right. If you're in the startup phase of your business and you want to uh, be and you need some legal guidance and getting your business off the ground, uh, go to linktree forward slash NPL consulting firm and book a free consultation with me today. I cannot wait to hear from you. Okay. All right. JT Black 87 said, no, ma'am. Okay, that's fine. All right. Our next story. Um, I don't know if you got, if, if the two of you watching, or actually the four of you, if you guys watching, if you remember the story of Apple suing the, the meal prep app called Prepare, if you remember uh, the story about Apple suing Prepare, the meal prep app, please give me some type of fruit emoji. If you don't know what I'm talking about, um, there is a meal prep app called Prepare that is supposed to help you, you know, plan meals for your family, um, order groceries, things like that. And they uh, they had a logo that was uh, the fruit, a pear with a leaf and a bite taken out of it. Um, and Apple sued them for trademark infringement because they said that this meal prep app might be mistakenly um, associated with Apple. Now, remember, Apple does not participate in meal prep. Apple does technology. They don't, right? Um, and a lot of people felt like Apple was doing a lot. But um, I wanted to update you guys on this story. Apple and Prepare have come to a settlement um, on uh, you know, on the logo, Prepare is going to be able to keep their logo. They're going to keep it, but they're just going to make a small change to it. They're going to change the shape of the leaf. Uh, if you look at my stories, you'll see the change that they made. I think it's really petty uh, what Apple asked them to do, but Prepare, you know, Apple got deep pockets and Prepare, I, they probably just don't want to battle it out anymore in the courts. So Prepare is just going to alter their logo a little bit um, so that Apple Apple will leave them alone. Now, if you remember this story, when we talked about it, we said that we felt like it was trademark bullying because under no circumstances would someone see that app and think that it was, you know, um, masterminded by Apple. Apple does devices. They do electronics. They're not really involved in meal prep, right? At least not yet. Uh, but because, but again, when you have a lot of money, you can kind of, you know, throw your weight around. And I feel like in this instance, Prepare was like, look, Apple, we, what, how can we come to some compromise? And this is the compromise that they came up with. So um, I hope that, you know, the Prepare app is very successful. I really am kind of looking at Apple sideways at this because while while it is important to zealously, hi, M Rocks, B Brown Sugar, while it is important to zealously defend your intellectual property, your trademarks and your copyrights, you want to make sure that you're not being a bully and just throwing your weight around, you know, smaller companies who may not have the money to defend themselves. We've had a lot of stories of trademark bullying happening, right? And it never looks good on you. It, it, it gives you a bad reputation in the marketplace. So I'm hoping that, you know, Apple can calm down a little bit, leave people alone. And let people get their money. Nobody thinks that Apple is doing recipes, all right? Um, but what do you think about that? What do you think about this compromise between Apple and the Prepare app? Do you think that Prepare should have held out and been like, Apple, mind your business? Or do you think that this was a smart move by Prepare? What do you, it just happened to you, Miss, uh, Mr. Mr. Rocks B. Brown Sugar? What happened to you, girl? Or sir, what, what I I don't I'm sorry I don't want to miss I don't want to misgender you. Um, okay, with it just happened to you with Hugo Boss. Uh, Lifestyle of Lola said Apple was doing the most. Sit down. Um, oh Mary, okay. Mary, it happened to you. Oh, Mary, you know what? We might have to have you come on the show one day and, and tell us your story. Oh, okay. You're TJ's friend. 
Okay. Uh, we might have to have you come on here and tell your story because I want people to understand that trademarks are real and fight, you know, having to fight it, it's, it, you know, it can be a lot. So, um, I'm going to inbox me. So I remember to, um, to contact you cause I would love for you to come here and tell your story about, um, how that happened to you. Okay. Uh, if you're open to it, if you don't want to talk about it, I understand. Oh, her go boss. Yeah, I could, yeah, okay, yeah, I see why they did that. Her go boss, okay. I see how that happened, but I was, st I, st I still would, would like to hear, you know, what the process was, you know, if they sent a cease and desist and all that. So, um, let's, let's connect in the DMs, okay? All right, um, okay, moving on to our final story of the evening. How many of y'all watched the Super Bowl? Y'all watched Tom Brady win his seventh ring. Look, I'm not here for Tom Brady's politics, but y'all know how I feel about Tom Brady. He gave the Patriots the best years of his career. I am going to root for Tom Brady, okay? I don't care if you don't like him. That's your business. But if you watch the Super Bowl, give me a football emoji, okay? Give me your football emoji. <laughs> All right. If you did not watch the Super Bowl, I'm sure you heard um, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. They won the Super Bowl after not having won the Super Bowl in over a decade. Right. Um, with Tom Brady at the helm as their quarterback. Um, and because of that, there are some trademark battles happening right now at the USPTO. So um, there is a phrase. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. There is a phrase apparently Tampa Bay had, you know, when they last won the Super Bowl called Champa Bay. See it or Champa Bay. C H A M P A Bay. Champa Bay. Like we're the champs, right? So, um uh in 2003, the term Champa Bay was uh was uh had a trademark registered by a gentleman by the name of Ronald Boucher, right? When the Tampa when the Tampa Bay Buccaneers won the Super Bowl back in 2003. Ronald Boucher's trademark expired in 2012, right? Because remember, when you have a trademark, you have to uh, renew your trademark every 10 years with the USPTO office. Ronald Boucher did not do that, so he lost his trademark. In 2021, because uh, not only have the Bucks won the Super Bowl, apparently Tampa Bay has had great successes in um, hockey, and um, baseball as well, right? Uh, there, fans are, re, there, there is a resurgence of the phrase Champa Bay, and because the trademark has expired, people are trying to pick it up. There are now, there are now currently three applications for the phrase Champa Bay in the USPTO uh, queue. The first one was filed in September of 2020 by a man uh, whose last name is Hanlon, and he wants to use the term Champa Bay for alcoholic beverages. There is another gentleman whose last name is DeWitt. He um, is selling Champa Bay merchandise on a website called champa-bay.com. Uh, he also has uh, the, the, the social media handles for Champa Bay on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Uh, he filed for his application in December of 2020. So Hanlon filed in September of 2020. DeWitt filed in December of 2020. And then you have a third gentleman whose last name is Tutko, who, who also filed a trademark application, but he does not want to divulge what uh, industry or what good class of goods he is trying to trademark Champa Bay for. So I want to know from you guys, Based on this information, who do you think is going to get this trademark? From the things that we have learned about trademark applications, right? We know that when you file a trademark, for the most part, it's usually first in line, first in time, right? And you have to have a, a, um, a, a recognizable business purpose for this trademark. So I want to know from you guys, of these three people who have filed for the term Champa Bay, who do you think should get it? Who do you think should get it? Who do you think should get it? Um, 
For me, I think it's uh, it's Hanlon because he's the first in line with his alcoholic beverages. But that's only if he actually is has you know some plans to release an alcoholic beverage. Otherwise, I think it should go to the guy Dewitt simply because he's already selling merchandise. He's got his online store. He's secured the handles. He's doing his thing. Mary said the first one. I totally agree with you. The only thing is we haven't seen any proof of Mr. Hanlon uh, releasing any alcoholic beverages. So we would have to uh, see if he has any in the pipeline. Is he does you know is he is he coming out with the line? Is it in, is it an intent to use application or is it one where he already has products in the marketplace? So we're gonna have to wait and see what happens and 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 who is going to. Um, prevail in this and also we need to remember that when you have a trademark it's not you know a blanket trademark you can have the same trademark for different things in different industries think of dove soap and dove chocolate they're both dove but they're two different things one is soap and one is chocolate that's why you can have two doves in the same store because they're not the same product right so maybe you can have champa beer alcoholic beverages and then you can have other champa beer merch right um, so maybe there can be a coexistence of trademarks here, but there are a lot of things that can happen and I'm very excited about this. I can't wait to hear what the results are and when I get them, I will definitely, um, update you guys about, uh, what's happening at Tampa Bay. And I just want to say Tom Brady still got it. Okay. Tom Brady still got it. Um, <laughs> all right. But those were the stories that I had for you this evening. Again, I was on Thursday because I missed Tuesday and I wanted to make sure that I gave you guys your, your three episodes with me. Um, we will be back on Monday with more stories. If you find anything that you want me to talk about, make sure that you uh, DM me, send it to me in my inbox. Um, what else? Make sure that you book your one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions to get your, you know, business roadmap together. Check out my, um, EIN, my EIN workshop. We are covering EIN numbers this month. If you don't know how to apply for an EIN number, what you're going to need to open a business bank account, start establishing business credit, paying employees, go pick up the workshop and learn how to apply for one. All right. Um, so this is where I'm going to leave you. Have a great weekend. Take care of yourselves. And I will talk to you on Monday. Bye.